Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fullerton and today I'd like to talk about series circuits. Our objectives are going to be to solve series circuits using VERP tables, and we'll talk about what those are in a few minutes, to calculate equivalent resistances for resistors in a series configuration, and finally to calculate the power used in series circuits. So to start off, what is a series circuit? A series circuit is some circuit that has a single current path only. A circuit that has a complete closed loop has one single path. That would qualify as a series circuit. If instead you have a couple different paths or branches where now current can go in two possible directions, that's a parallel circuit. That's not what we're talking about for today. Today we're going to stick with series circuits. In a series circuit, it's important to note that the current is constant throughout the circuit. Anywhere you look, at any point, the current going in is equal to the current going out, and it is always the same anywhere in that circuit. So we're going to use a couple of tools to help us analyze these. One of these is known as Kirchhoff's Current Law, or KCL for short. It says that the sum of all currents entering any part of the circuit is equal to the sum of all currents leaving that part of the circuit. If 5 amps comes into an element in the circuit, 5 amps must go out. Really, this is just a restatement of the law of conservation of charge. We'll also talk about Kirchhoff's voltage law, or KVL. And what that says is as you go around any closed loop in a circuit, the sum of all the potential drops must be zero. And that's really a restatement of the cons law of conservation of energy. And we'll see how that applies here in a few minutes. So if we look at a sample problem, we have a 3 ohm resistor and a 6 ohm resistor connected in series in an operating electric circuit. If the current through the 3 ohm resistor is 4 amps, what is the potential difference across the 6 ohm resistor? Well, to begin, let's draw a picture of this situation. Let's start off and draw our a 3 ohm resistor. And right after that in series, we have a 6 ohm resistor. Now, we know that there are 4 amps of current going through the 3 ohm resistor. And if you remember, anywhere in a series circuit, the current must be the same. So if 4 amps is going through the 3 ohm resistor, we must also have 4 amps going through the 6 ohm resistor. It's because of Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL. Now, we can calculate the voltage drop across the 6 ohm resistor using Ohm's law. We know the resistance, we know the current's current flow, so the potential difference also known as the voltage drop, must be the current through it times its resistance, or 4 amps times 6 ohms for a total potential drop of 24 volts. That means that the voltage at this point in the circuit will be 24 volts higher than it is over here, or as current flow through, flows through it, the potential difference from one side to the other of the resistor is 24 volts. Let's take a look at another one. The diagram below shows currents in a segment of an electric circuit. What does the ammeter read? And remember the ammeter is the A with the circle around it. Well, if we look here, we have 2 amps coming in and 3 amps coming in. So we have a total of 5 amps in. And we have 4 amps out, 1 amp out, and 2 amps out. So we have 7 amps coming out. What do we have to have here? Well, by Kirchhoff's current law, whatever goes in must come out. So we have some other unknown current going through the ammeter. If we have 5 coming in currently and 7 going out, there must be another 2 amps coming in. So that must be what's flowing through that ammeter, another 2 amps into the circuit. Now, as we talk about these things, we can also look at things like equivalent resistance. When you have a number of resistors in series, you can look at those and say, what could I replace those resistors in series with that would give the equivalent performance, do the equivalent job? And if I have a 2,000 ohm resistor or a 2 kilo ohm resistor, and along with another 2 kilo ohm resistor, and a third 2 kilo ohm resistor, how could I replace those with one single resistor that would have the same functionality? Well, in a series circuit, the equivalent resistance, or R equivalent, is equal to just the sum of the resistors in series. So R equivalent here is R1 plus R2 plus R3. Or for our case, as we look at this, R equivalent will be 2 kilo ohms or 2,000 ohms, R1, 
plus 2,000 ohms, plus 2,000 ohms, covering the three resistors in this circuit, or our equivalent is 6,000 ohms. So we could draw an equivalent circuit that would look something like this. We still have our 12 volt potential difference. Our circuit will replace those three resistors with one resistor in series, and this will be 6,000 ohms, or 6 kilo ohms. Now we can use this information as well as a very useful tool in circuit analysis known as a VERP table to help understand what's going on when we analyze these circuits, to help understand everything that's happening. In the table we're going to make, VERP table, V stands for voltage, I for current, R for resistance, and P for power. And the units we're going to use, our standard units, are going to be volts, amps, ohms, and watts. Now with this and this table, up down the left side, we'll list all of the circuit elements. So in this case, if we were looking at that previous circuit with three resistors, we have R1, R2, R3, and we'll also make a row at the bottom for the table. And then using what we know already, our basic circuit formulas, such as Ohm's law, V equals IR, and also our definition of power, power equals IV, or it's I squared R, or V squared over R, can use any of those, we can figure out everything that's going on in a circuit. Might be a little bit easier to go look at the example. So let's try and make a VERP table to analyze this same circuit. First thing I'm going to do to make my table is I'm going to list down the left hand side the elements. I have R1, R2, and R3. So we'll have R1, R2, R3, and I'll also make a row for total down here. Then we'll add in our columns for voltage, current, resistance, and power. As we do this, keep in mind our units for all of these are going to be the base or SI units. V in volts, I in amps, R in ohms, power in watts. Create my table here. And we'll begin by filling in what we already know. Well, the total potential difference in the circuit is given by our voltage source, 12 volts. So we know the total voltage, the total potential difference must be 12. And we know what R1, R2, and R3 are. Each of those is 2,000 ohms. It tells us the resistance for those elements. Now I start seeing what other things I can figure out. Since I have three resistors in series, we just determined that the total equivalent resistance must be 6,000 ohms. So I'll fill that in for my total. My total resistance is 6,000 ohms. Now, anytime I know two items in the same row, I can always figure out the other two using Ohm's law or my power equation. So in this case, if I want the total current, I know the total voltage and the total resistance, I can use I equals V over R, a form of Ohm's law, or 12 volts over 6,000 ohms, will give me about 0 .00 amps. So I can fill in 0 .002 here. Also remember, in a series circuit, the current anywhere in that circuit is the same. So if I have 0 .002 amps flowing through my potential source, I must have that same current flowing through all my resistors. So I can fill 0 .002 in for R1, R2, and R3. Well, now that I've done that, I can also go calculate my total power for the bottom row. I know voltage, I know current. I could use any of the equations, but why don't we use power equals V squared over R. My voltage is 12, so that'll be 12 volts squared over my total equivalent resistance, 6,000 ohms, or 0 0.024 watts. All right, I know my t bottom row completely. For the next ones, I know current and I know resistance for R1, R2, and R3. Those should be pretty easy to figure out then. V is equal to IR by Ohm's law. So the voltage drop across R1 must be 0 0.002 amps times 2,000 ohms, and that comes out to be 4 volts. Same thing for R2 and 
for R3. And that only makes sense. If we start with 12 volts here, we must drop 4 across our first resistor, drop 4 across our second resistor, and drop 4 across our third resistor. So if we start at a positive 12, and I'm just going to put a ground symbol down here to remind me. We'll just call that a reference point of 0. At the top of this, we must have a positive 12 volts. Across R1, we drop 4. That means we have 8 volts here. Across R2, we drop another 4 volts. We must have 4 volts here. And across R3, we drop 4 volts. Brings us back to 0. So to make a complete loop, I see the sum of all the potential drops must be 0. And as I go through here, I see the negative sign first. So negative 12 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 equals 0. Kirchhoff's voltage law, or KVL, holds. And to figure out the power here, I can use any of my power equations, since I know V, I, and R. And whichever equation you come up with, you'll find that you have a power for each of the resistors of 0 0.008 watts. Interesting to note here, if you look at the table as we've analyzed the series circuit now, our total voltage is equal to the total voltage drop is equal to the sum of the individual voltage drops. Our total current is the same everywhere in the circuit. Our resistance is the sum. Our total resistance is the sum of the individual resistances. And our total power used is the sum of the power used in each of the individual resistors. So now we could answer just about any question somebody would want to ask of us about this circuit. Someone said, what's the current flowing through R2? We just look at our table and go, oh, 0.002 amps flows through R2. Or what's the power dissipated in resistor R3? Well, we go to the R3 row, the power column, and say 0.008 watts is the power dissipated by R3. So a very, very useful tool for analyzing circuits. If we take another sample problem, we have a 2 ohm resistor and a 4 ohm resistor connected in series with a 12 volt battery. If the current through the 2 ohm resistor is 2 amps, find the current through the 4, 4 ohm resistor. Again, if they're connected in series, you just have to remember the current anywhere in the circuit is the same in a series circuit. So if we have 2 amps going through the first resistor, we must have 2 amps going through the 4 ohm resistor. Let's look at another verb table sort of problem. In the circuit diagram, we have two 4 ohm resistors connected to a 16 volt battery. Find the rate at which electrical energy is expended. Well, the rate at which energy is expended, that's another, word, another definition for power. So we want the power at which electrical energy is expended. We'll make our verb table by writing our circuit elements. We have R1 and R2. We'll also make a row for total and fill in our V, I, R, and P. Now, next step is to fill in what we already know. Because it tells us our potential difference gives us 16 volts, we know our total voltage is 16. We know R1 and R2 are 4 ohms each. And since it's a series circuit, we can find the total resistance or the equivalent resistance by adding our two resistors. 4 plus 4 gives us a total of 8 ohms. We know two things in that bottom row. We can figure out the other two. I, we can figure out using Ohm's law. Current is voltage over resistance. 16 volts over 8 ohms will give us 2 amps here. Remember, anywhere in a series circuit, the current flow is the same. So we must have 2 amps through each of our resistors. Well, now we know two things in those rows. This becomes a matter of plug and chug. Potential drop across R1 must be I times R by Ohm's law, or 8 volts. Same thing for R2. And just like we found before, if you add up the two voltage drops across the resistors, that equals the total voltage drop. Current is the same in all three. Resistance adds up for a series circuit. And to find power, again, we can use any of those power equations we want. But I'm going to go with the simple I times V to tell us that that's 16 watts in R1, 16 watts in R2, and 16 times 2 is 32 watts total, or add up the individual powers. 
It asks us for the rate at which electrical energy is expended. That must be the total power, or 32 watts in this circuit. Let's take a look at one more VERP type problem. A 50 ohm resistor, an unknown resistor R, a 120 volt source and an ammeter are connected in a complete circuit. The ammeter reads half an amp. Find the equivalent resistance value of resistor R, pardon me, find the equivalent resistance, find the value of resistor R, and find the power dissipated by the 50 ohm resistor. And we can answer all three of these questions by making our VERP table again. Our circuit elements, I'll call this R1 and our unknown R2. We'll list those down our left hand side, make a row for total, cross the top, our V, I, R, and P. So there's our verb table. Begin by filling in what we already know. In this case, it tells us that the total current going through that ammeter is half an amp. So we know our total current must be 0.5. We also know R1 has a value of 50 ohms. We don't know R2 yet, but we do know the current through each of our elements because in a series circuit, the current is the same. So 0.5 amps here, 0.5 amps here, and we are also given a 120 volt source. So we know our total voltage must be 120. Well, given that, we know two things in this first row, let's in this total row, let's figure out the resistance. R equals V over I by Ohm's law, so this must be 120 over 0.5 or 240 ohms can also figure out the potential drop in R1, V equals I times R, 0.5 times 50 would be 25 volts. Well, now we have a couple different directions we can go. We can figure out V for R2 or R for R2. Either way, doesn't matter which one you do first. Since the voltage drops in a series circuit all add up, if that's 25 and our total is 120, this must be 95 volts, because 25 plus 95 equals 120. So the voltage drop across R2 is 95. We could then find out resistance using Ohm's law, R equals V over I. Or we could also realize, just looking at R, our total equivalent resistance is 240, R1 is 50. That means, since these two must add together, R2 must equal 190 because the sum of all resistors in the series circuit add up to the total equivalent resistance, which is also equal to 95 divided by 0.5 by Ohm's law. So it works out either way. Then it just becomes a math exercise to fill in our power column. 12.5 watts, V times I, 95 times 0.5, 47.5 watts, and finally total, 120 times 0.5 or 60, which is also the sum of 12.5 and 47.5 watts. So to answer the question, find the equivalent resistance. We did that, 240 ohms. Find the value of resistor R. That's R2, or 190 ohms. And the power dissipated by the 50 ohm resistor? Well, that's R1 power dissipated, or 12.5 watts. So by making our VERP table, we solved all three of those questions at once. One last question, we'll call it quits for today. What must be inserted in the circuit between points A and B to establish a steady electric current in the incomplete circuit represented in the diagram? We have a resistor already. What do you need for current to flow? Well, we've got R. In order to have current flowing, we also need a potential difference, a source of potential difference. That could be a cell. That could be a battery. That could be a voltage source, 120 volts, for example. Anything that provides a source of potential difference would give us a complete circuit in which current would flow. So what we really need here is a source of potential difference, a voltage source.
All right, hopefully that gets you started. If you have questions, need more help, check out aplusphysics.com, and I'll also throw in another video here going through another vert problem to get you some extra practice. Thanks for your time, and make it a terrific day.